Do you remember when you first came into the shop and you were all like, huh, I wonder how you use this machine? Well, here's how you do it. This is a planer. A planer is a very important machine to have around if you're working with rough lumber. It's the second tool you'll use if you want to turn rough lumber into beautiful, smooth, workable pieces, often called dressed or surfaced lumber. And a planer, like many machines in the shop, only has one job that it's any good at. That job is to cut boards down to a desired thickness. Like the jointer, the planer uses a big spinny thing of death to do its job. Unlike the jointer, however, the big spinny thing of death, or the cutter head, is located at the top of the machine. This whole thing is called the planer bed, and it has two parts. The front bit of the planer bed is called the infeed table because that's where the material is fed into the machine. The back bit of the planer bed is called the outfeed table because that's where the material is fed out of the machine. In order to get a consistent thickness across the width of your board, the planer bed and the cutter head have a very specific and a very exact relationship. They are parallel to one another. That means that as your board goes through the planer, it should come out the other side with two flat parallel faces. On either side of the cutter head, there are rollers that will feed the material for you. That's right, there's no push sticks here. This machine does that job for you. When you feed your material into the machine, the roller in front of the cutter head, the infeed roller, will bring your material into the cutter head. Once your piece passes under the cutter head, the rollers at the back of the machine, the outfeed rollers, will pull your material out the back of the planer. And at the front, on the right, we have the brains of the operation, the control panel. The bottom half has two really important buttons, the on button and the off button. There are two other less important buttons here as well, and they allow you to move the planer bed up and down. These are primarily reserved for times when we don't need an exact thickness and we just want to quickly jog the planer bed up and down. If an exact measurement is what you're looking for, which is 99% of the time, we'll use the digital thickness controls on the top half. These two readouts display information about the distance between the planer bed and the cutter head, otherwise known as how thick your piece will become. The bottom readout displays that value at all times. Whatever this window says, that's the exact dimension between the planer bed and the cutter head at all times. The top readout is sort of like a working window. As you're inputting measurements to set the height of the planer bed, they'll show up there. And so, how do we use it? Well, there's a couple things we need to sort out before we start feeding lumber into the planer. First of all, before we start using the planer, we need to have one face of our rough lumber flat, and that is the jointer's job. If you don't know how to use the jointer already, click up here to find out. The second thing we need to sort out is the most important part of this whole operation, the thickness. And we actually need to sort out two thicknesses. Thick nigh? We need to know our board's current thickness and we need to know our board's desired thickness. Now the desired thickness of your part depends completely on what it is that you're making, so check your plans to figure that out. To find your board's current thickness, simply measure the end of your board. Now that will usually vary from one edge to the other, so make sure you look for the thickest part. Around here, with our material, after having gone through the jointer first, that's usually around one inch for our current thickness. We generally start planing at or just below our board's current thickness, so normally around an inch. Press one on the number pad and you'll see that the top window will display 1.000, which is perfect, that's our target value. Now, press the flashing blue start button and the planer bed will move around until it reaches an inch. Once it's there, press the start button and feed your lumber in. If you've done everything properly, you'll now see that some of the top of your board is flat. Terrific, first pass successfully completed. For each successive pass, we're gonna move the planer bed up by 1 16th of an inch. To do that, press two on the number pad and you'll notice that it changes to 0 0.938. That's the decimal equivalent of 15 sixteenths. And that is 1 16th less than our first pass, so we're on the right track. Hit the blue start button, and once the planer bed stops moving, feed your piece into the machine. Now at some point, you're going to reach max thick. And max thick is a term we give to material that has two completely flat and parallel faces. The actual thickness of a board at max thick is irrelevant. It doesn't matter, it's different for every single board. What does matter is that it has two faces that are completely flat and clean and they are parallel. 
Once you're at max thick, you no longer need to put the original jointed face down. At this point, you should just put the ugliest face up as you work towards your final desired thickness. The planer is a big, dangerous power tool, so we have to follow best safety practices while we're using it. And all of the common safety stuff applies here. Safety glasses, well they should be on your face, not on your head. Do you have sweet long hair, like I do? Well tie it back. Entanglement risks pose an issue here as well. So things like jackets, super baggy clothing, strings from your hoodie, rings, watches, bracelets, they all need to be dealt with before you use the planer. And when you do use the planer, it's going to create a boatload of wood chips. So please make sure the dust collection is turned on before you begin using it. And even though the big spinny thing of death is safely tucked away in the top of the planer, there's still a couple of extra things we have to be mindful of when we're using it. The infeed rollers in the machine will put a lot of pressure on your board as they pull it through for you. As such, you never ever want to have your fingers underneath your board while you're feeding it into the machine. That's called a pinch point. It's also called an owie. As the planer is doing its job, all of the bits on the top of your board that are being cut off are being thrown towards the front of the machine. Thankfully, our dust collection catches the majority of them. However, because science or something, the heavier bits can still escape out the front of the planer. Could be loose bits off the back of your board, could be a loose knot. Either way, never ever look into the planer while it's running. If your board gets stuck and will not continue any further through the planer, do not, as we just mentioned, look into the front of the machine. Instead, just turn the machine off, wait until it stops, and lower the bed down and you can find out what the issue is. And that about wraps it up. If you follow those tips, tricks, and safety guidelines while using the planer, you should end up with a board that has two flat, parallel faces at your desired thickness. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do it. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll start. What's that? Oh, did I not mention the pre-flight safety checklist? Okay, name, Mr. Saunders. Birthdays. Not sure why that's relevant. Wait, why would you need to know my weight? Do you have any boards? Yes, only one. Does your board have one flat face? Yes, obviously. Do you know your board's current th oh. Yep. Do you know your board's desired thickness? Oh. Thickness, thickness, come on, I need to get this done. Birth date. Not sure why that's real. Oh, hey. Yeah, I might be a while. Aww.